First, though, our top story this half an hour, major trade overhaul. The United States and Canada reaching a revised NAFTA agreement. The deal includes new rules on the origin of automobiles, more market access for U.S. dairy farmers, and the updated digital trade and intellectual property provisions. Joining me right now in a Fox Business exclusive is Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross. Secretary, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you, Maria. Give us the uh, perspective here. How important is this deal for American manufacturing? What does America get out of this deal? I think it's a huge deal. I think it clearly vindicates President Trump's trade policies because this is fundamental reform. And now there is no more NAFTA. There's USMCA. So rest in peace, NAFTA. The problems that NAFTA had left us with were that while they had a nominal 62.5% requirement for auto content to be produced within the NAFTA region, it was specific to individual parts, many of which are not even in use anymore. And parts that weren't laid out in the NAFTA agreement are deemed to be made within NAFTA, even though, for the most part, they were not. This new agreement updates the list, and the list will be revised frequently. But more importantly, the basic percentage within USMCA goes from 62 and a half up to the new 75. And there's a new requirement that 40 to 45 percent of the total content be produced at wages more than $16 an hour. That's meant to assure that the U.S. gets its fair share of the volume brought back into NAFTA, because the NAFTA had permitted too much volume coming in from outside. So this will benefit the auto parts industries in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, mostly the U.S., and it will be tens of billions of dollars in total. That is a big deal, what you just went through. And, and the auto sector, obviously, is one that we've been watching in terms of impact. Let me ask you about the steel and aluminum tariffs. The president obviously imposed on both countries earlier this year. They're going to remain in effect and will be dealt with separately. Can you tell us what that means? Yes, those are separate issues from this. This is meant to be a fundamental revision of the relationships among the three countries. There are problems specific to steel and aluminum relating to our national defense. And at this point in time, those stay the same. For that matter, there's also a provision in here that if we put in a 232 on, on automobiles in the future, there will be an exemption essentially of current levels from within the Canadian-Mexican uh, manufacturing. So it, all, it not only so far has not touched the steel and aluminum tariffs, it tips its head to how we will deal in the future if there's an automotive 232. So, so will those tariffs eventually be removed? Is there a timeline for that? There is no timeline. I see. What about Canada agreeing to raise the threshold for applying duties to cross-border purchases? This was an important demand of the U.S., correct, that Canada's new, new uh, de minimis <coughs> level? Yes. Canada had had, believe it or not, a much lower de minimis level than even Mexico. Mexico had had $50 de minimis, meaning the amount that can be brought in without tariffs on it. They've now put that up to $100. So now goods up to $100 can be brought in to Mexico with no tariff and no VAT. That's a big win for American e-commerce companies. Canada had had a 20 Canadian dollar limit on de minimis. They've now bifurcated it. The first extra $20, namely going from 20 to 40, will apply to uh, uh, the uh, provincial taxes, but they will go up higher in terms of exemption from tariffs. So it's not quite as good as the deal with Mexico, but again, it's a win for American 
uh, e-commerce. Uh, and of course, we've been talking this morning about the access to the Canadian dairy market. This was a sticking point as well. Tell us what kind of access has been increased for the U.S. farmers into the Canadian dairy market. Well, it's quite huge. We were already selling some 600 million a year of dairy product up there, but the infamous uh, class six and class seven, which were what provoked the big outcry last year, particularly when the president was out in Wisconsin, those classes are being gradually done away with. There also will be new higher quotas on cheeses, on poultry, on eggs, on all kinds of dairy products. So it's a win for the dairy industry. They also have gotten rid of the very unfair separate grading of American wheat. They were treating American wheat as though it was something qualitatively different from Canadian, and the net effect of that was very discriminatory. That goes away. Also what goes away are some of the non-science-based sanitary and phytosanitary rules that were used to keep out American agriculture. And finally, 10 years patent protection is now being given to biologics. So that's also a very good win for high tech. When are you expecting this deal to be signed? Well, it can't be signed until the Congress has had 60 days to look at it. So assuming it finds its way to Congress today, which is what we expect, there could be a signing within the 60 days, but the ratification process might take a little bit longer. So how does the midterm elections sort of, you know, upset that, Wilbur? Because we know that there is a speculation, even if it's a l lower speculation, that the House flips in the midterms. Do you expect any pushback from your friends on the left? Well, if they want to push back against the auto industry, mm -hmm. if they want to push back against the steel industry, and they want to push back against the farmers, and they want to push back against e-commerce and the inventiveness of American industry, good luck to them. Well, I mean, I, I guess, you know, the issue is they may say, well, we'll just keep the old NAFTA deal in place. Remember, uh, the president can revoke the old NAFTA deal by simply giving six months' notice. The old NAFTA deal is not going to be a realistic alternative. I see. Okay. And, and let me ask you what else you're working on, because I know that you've had a big week this past week, the U.S. making headway on trade talks with some uh, of its biggest partners, except China. Uh, the president signed a renegotiated trade pact with South Korea, as well as reached an agreement with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to open trade talks. How important is the discussions right now with our European friends and Japan? Well, I think, first of all, solidifying a new arrangement with Mexico and Canada is the best thing in terms of enhancing our negotiating position with other people, because it solidifies our own neighborhood. It solidifies $1.1 trillion of trade among the three parties. So the first thing is it locks in our base very well. Second thing that it does is now Canada and Mexico will be united with us in our efforts against uh, unfair practices by other parties. Third thing is this new arrangement by itself is already going to be somewhat expensive to both Europe and Asia because, the, as I said before, those parts that were not covered right. <laughs> under the old NAFTA were being brought in from outside. Well, the outside was mainly Asia and Europe. Right. Well, that's so, what I was going to say, Wilbur. I mean, what about China? Do you think these tariffs are going to start impacting American families in the fourth quarter, given the fact that at some point something's got to give, retailers may raise prices? Well, this deal in and of itself, I don't see it being a big problem with raising no, prices. No, no, I mean China. Well, we shall see about China. I think we ought to take things one step at a time. There are always naysayers on everything the president initiates. People said, oh, you can't do this with Canada and Mexico. Well, he did it, and he came away with a very good deal for all three parties. Because right. remember, Canada and Mexico 
will also benefit to a lesser degree than we from bringing parts back in that were produced outside mm. <coughs> all three countries. Right. So it's not that they're getting hurt. This is a win-win-win trifecta. Mm.